Welcome everybody at the CX Software 6.4 release webinar. Today um, I'm going to do this webinar together with um, my colleague in the, in the Netherlands, Marcel Legerste. Uh, my name is Wouter Born. I'm the uh, CTO of uh, CXO Software. I'm also responsible for our um, USA uh, part of the business. Um, today we're going to talk, uh, me and Marcel are going to talk together about uh, about the great new release 6.4. Um, it, it has a key theme, 6.4, which is the CXO catalog, which, uh, which I will introduce later today in the webinar. Uh, before we continue, just a couple of uh, rules. Um, we'd love to handle your questions at the end of the webinar, so please use the, um, uh, use the chat window to ask your questions or, or um, yeah, use the question facility that's, uh, that's in GoToWebinar. Um, you will be all muted, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll answer your questions at the end of the webinar, and um, uh, both me and Marcel will do that. Okay, the agenda for today, um, we're going to have an extensive look at this whole new platform uh, called CXO Catalog. Um, after that, Marcel will take over from me, and he will take a deep dive into some of the new 6.4 features. Um, many of them are catalog related, but they are uh, representing definitely some standalone value as well. So there are some, some great new features in 6.4 that also if you don't use CXO catalog, you could really benefit from. And then we end up with um, the Q&A. Expect um, that we leave at least 15 minutes at the end of the webinar for, for Q&A. Okay, so CXO catalog. Um, if we introduce this concept, I think what the, what the thought behind this is is to not um, only rely on the formats, the out of the box formats that we have put as, as CXO software in uh, in in the software, but to promote a way of sharing. And this is something we've been seeing at several businesses quite popular, uh, and it, it has had a lot of success at, at some very known brands, Airbnb, people share their houses, Uber, people share their cars, and with WordPress, uh, people can share templates and, um, and yeah, whole website layouts. I think with that last category, we have um, most, yeah, um, most similarity. Um, so let me be so free to add a fourth concept to this, uh, CXO catalog. Um, hopefully one day it's going to be equally big, uh, but for now, um, yeah, we're we're just starting this uh, this this concept and this platform. Um, but I really believe that um, um, it's it's going to be of great value for all of our customers, um, and it's really a game changer in in the way how we've been working with CXO. Um, so, having that said, uh, let's let's move a little bit to to our user groups. Um, within CXO software, we have four different user groups in, in four different regions, from USA to UK, Netherlands, and, and now Germany as well. And in these user groups, um, we discuss several things, but one key theme that always comes back is, okay, how are you using the platform? What kind of reports do you use? What's your most favorite dashboard? Uh, people like to learn from each other and, and hear from each other, um, how how they are using uh, the software and get inspired. Um, I think what we're trying to deliver now with CXO Catalog is the next version of this. Um, it's a digital version, so it doesn't replace CXO user groups. It's it would actually be a, a great enabler um, to not only show how you're using CXO software, but also being able to really share. Um, the, the best practice dashboards that you've developed in your organization and being able to also get those best practices from other organizations and, and engage with them and review them. So far, we've had 18 out-of-the-box templates within uh, CXO software. Those are based on best practices that we've learned over the years from, from our users, from from CFO offices of, of large multinational organizations. Um, I think that the templates are great, but more and more what we see is that our customers like to 
build them slightly different or completely different. Like what we see here on the left, it's um, it's our stacked bar template. It's it's used a lot for um, yeah stuff like working capital or cash flow uh, statements to to explain um, you know what contributed in a positive way and a negative way to something like working capital, and the line kind of represents it in the middle. It's a it's a great format. But we also hear a lot from our customers that we like the chart, but um, we might not really like the, the, the bars on the right. Uh, we'd like to replace it with a pie chart, for example. Uh, so we see the need for more flexibility. Um, and over the years, we've been developing more and more what we call our free format template um, engine or functionality. Uh, it has been enriched. Um, over the years with with more features um, and they're they're today they're they're as good as our standard templates um, and the the real big upside from these free format templates is that there is an unlimited number of different visualizations that you can build so it's not limited to the 18 out of the box templates but you know you can keep building these uh, these templates you can use them as templates so you build multiple reports as of one template or you can also use them as free format reports uh, the nice thing is you can always copy them you don't have to scar start from scratch and, and you'll build another uh, visualization on, on on a previous example at our average customer we see you know 20 30 40 different free format templates reports um, and they all have great concepts and visualizations. However, these free format reports don't really facilitate in this pre-built concept where we believe as, um, as CXO that um, you can win a lot of time and a lot of efficiency by, by not rebuilding every time everything from scratch uh, from with a blank canvas, but using best practices from from um, from from other users or or industry expert best practices, so we believe it's now time to go beyond our 18 standard templates and deliver a framework where you can actually download an unlimited number of templates, um, where you can um, store your own templates and reports. Um, so it's a very flexible, um, flexible framework, and and that framework or or that platform where where this whole sharing and downloading of templates is going to happen, is called Seekso Catalog. Seekso Catalog it's a it's a website that's outside of Seekso software itself. So it's um, uh, let me say this right. It, it I mean it's it's not functionality in, as part of your if you install Seekso software version, it's a public website that's hosted by us um, where there are many new templates that you might not have today. They are sometimes they can be built by us uh, based on, on just best practices or, or you know a way for us to um, showcase new features of new releases or there, there are many reasons why we could build them. But we mainly hope this is going to be a user driven community of templates. So that you don't only use Seekso Catalog to, to download new new reports and new templates, new visualizations, but that you also will provide new content to it. So the platform will grow. And um, and, and by using um, functionality like rating and, and feedback forms, um, we really hope to filter out those templates that are really good and really strong and, and well working. Um, and uh, that way you can you can easily get to the best examples that are out there on Seekso Catalog. Well, I think the best way to show you what Seekso Catalog does is to, um, to basically show you uh, a, a demonstration of, of, of how this works. Um, what you kind of see here in these images, on the left side you see Seekso Catalog, on the right side you see Seekso Software, web browser client, um, and, and these two interact with each other. And that's what I'm going to show you today in the, in, the, in the demonstration. So those of you who have visited um, our Agora uh, customer uh, conference uh, earlier this, this year, um, you might have seen part of this demonstration already. I'm, I'm going to use the same, uh, same example, but it's, it's enhanced with some, some other examples. Um, 
and I think it's it's great to you know see this once more how how this exactly works. Um, I'm going to use um, a user, f um, yeah, from from one of our uh, customers. It's um, it, it's it's one of um, you know we've we've set up a fictive application based on um, on on how one of our customers would would use CXO software. Uh, it's an insurance application, um, and um, let me log in. So before I go to CXO catalog, I first like to take you to the regular usage of of you know how this customer of ours would use CXO software. First of all, they ha they have a great way of showing their homepage. Um, I really like this. I think this is a this is a great best practice example of um, of a free format homepage. Um, it's um, it, it contains a section where where you kind of see their different entities or at least core core business units, and then on the other side you see the most important accounts. So it provides some kind of uh, overview where you can go into depth into your entities and at the same time you can go into different accounts and all these things are drillable. So I can go from um, into one specific Netherlands entity and I would drill into the further details. Um, the, the reason why I show you this, first of all, that you see a little how this application is structured because later on we're going to download some some new reports into this application and it's helpful to understand um, you know the kind of accounts and the kind of entities that are in this application but also because this user has already uploaded this template and the drill down template that I just showed already to CXO catalog so this is already part of it well how do I go into CXO catalog and, and how do I see for example how this report looks like that there but first of all, you have to be an administrator to um, to use Cixo Catalog. Any user can enter the website. It's not it's not a protected website. It doesn't um, um, yeah it's not behind a firewall or something. But the link can be found in the Cixo Designer. So when I go into Cixo Designer, um, and by the way, it can also be used by a report creator. It doesn't have to be a full administrator, but uh, the functionality can definitely be used by uh, report creator which has less uh, rights than than a, than a full administrator um, now currently under the name if I click on um, on the name of this user there is a seek a catalog drill down or you know a menu that opens and clicking on this it will bring me to the seek a catalog website uh, it will leave the seek a software website but that's fine because I don't really need that at this moment it will bring me into the seek a catalog website well, if you already logged in or you've logged in previously, you will be automatically logged in because I can see here on my account that I'm that I'm in, uh, that I have an act active session on this website. Uh, we will provide you um, with um, with an account for this platform, and um, that's based up on, on up on requests. So um, if you and I, I will share um, the right email address to to communicate with us about. Uh, seeks a catalog later on in my slides but if you request an account we'll provide you with an account for this and uh, from that moment you can start downloading templates and you can um, also you can uh, start reviewing templates well if I scroll down a little bit I actually get down to the part where the template that was used by my organization is actually shown here and if I click on this well, um, you, you'll see the, the user that uploaded this. this. This specific template comes from Nationaal Nederlanden. It has a basic explanation uh, what this really does, but also it explains um, how this template will be imported using the import wizard. Um, and probably more interesting, because this is my own template, I don't, I don't really want to see how this is imported. I'm just curious to see if there's been already any reviews. And this has one review of five stars and um, it it's actually has been um, um, a user from McDonald's, uh, Philip, who wrote a review um, and he says he loves the report. So, you know, that's an interesting feedback for me as, as the person who delivered this template. And again, we'll, um, we, we have some slides on how you can deliver or how you can contribute to Seeks a Catalog. Um, initially, I just like to show the interaction. So, as the owner of, or as the as the person who uploaded this this template, I can see um, 
I can see now if there are any reviews. So that's that's great. Um, let me go back to all reports and, um, and and just show you a little bit of what kind of templates are in there. Today we have 14 reports in Seekso Catalog. So there are, there are two pages. Um, there is uh, the first page and, and the second page there are, there are five more. Um, and all these templates have been you know, based on best practices that we've learned, reports that we might have been rebuilding a lot at, at our customers. Um, and some of them are, are true customer examples. And uh, I actually like to take you to two real customer examples today and, and see what happens if we would import that. So to start, I'm going to take my top ranked uh, report. And, and this is a new platform, so two stars is top ranked. Um, I, I really hope once you all start using this, you're really going to use the review functionality as well. So we really get value and understanding of what are what are good templates and whatnot. Um, but this is this looks very nice uh, to me uh, as as a as a user from uh, from Nationale Nederland. I would like to see this a little bit further. So I, I just click on the template, and I see it comes from Simrise. So uh, thank you, Simrise, for for sharing this format uh, with us. And if I'd like to see this template a little better, I can actually click on it and see it. It consists out of a great image on the background, some tiles on top of this, and um, uh, and uh, yeah, basically uh, a table with uh, with regions, and then a pie chart to show uh, a further in-depth analysis. So it's it's not a highly sophisticated. Uh, template, but it's it's very valuable, especially this nice background image. I think a lot of you would could could see value in this and and use something like this. Um, the challenge a little bit for my organization is that I don't have all these regions that you see in here, but let's just give it a try and uh, and see how far we get. Um, so the very first, I need to say that I've agreed with the privacy policy, and this is just a GDPR thing. Um, yeah, we, we need to make sure that um, you, you understand our privacy policy here. Um, but once I've checked that checkbox, um, the, the catalog website for my user profile already knows the URL of my application. Uh, it's important to know this because it needs to send me back to my regular CXO, my local CXO instance. Um, and, and that is already part of this checkbox. If it's empty, you can always paste it in the correct URL, but in this case, I'll just um, say that I want to go back basically to to CXO. Um, it will open the designer for us, and in the designer, it will open the import wizard. Um, the import wizard exists out of a couple of steps, and this really depends on the kind of template. Sometimes there are, there are 10 steps, sometimes just one. Um, it can be very simple, it can be very uh, sophisticated, but in this wizard, you'll be guided with some some simple um, yeah, wizard steps uh, and images that, that will explain you what you're actually doing. So to start, we need to select a source system. Well, we only have one source system here. It's the insurance application. Um, then it asks me for a sales account. Well, um, I don't think I have exactly a sales account, but there is result, uh, operating result, and then there is operating income. So let me pick operating income. And now it wants to know what the region dimension is. And that's basically um, to understand, I guess, to, to set up this table here with, with regions. So in this application, regions is an entity. Um, it wants an entity for North America. Well, that's kind of the problem here. It's, uh, this application contains no US entities, but you know we can, we can pick something else. Uh, so we're going to ongoing business and for United States of America, we just pick other. And for South America, we also pick something else. Um, maybe uh, asset management. And for Europe, I think we we have, a, we have a great entity for Europe. So there is Insurance Europe. And then Asia Pacific. I saw an entity in Japan. So um, that's definitely in Asia. So. So I've picked all these four um, tiles, basically. I've set a dimension that I want to use for, for this table here. And now the last thing was asked, what dimension would you like to use for the breakdown of the, um, yeah, the further breakdown? 
and in this application, um, life insurances versus non-life insurances is a is a key um, uh, split up, and I really like to see that in the pie chart. So I select the last thing, I click Create Report, and it actually will do it will it will import this report, and um, it, yeah, like I said, the the, the world map um, yeah, what I can't change, I can't create entities that are that are not there. So um, if you want to use a world map, it kind of makes sense that you also have these regions. But um, for the rest, of this template really really fully works. So for example, I can I can click here on all of these individual entities, and there I see the live versus non-live distribution on the right side in the in the report. So this is a yeah, this is a fully operational report. Um, it could potentially even contain drill downs uh, to the tile, so that's all part of the wizard. You can all set these things as wizard steps uh, while while importing it. Um, this this specific report doesn't have drill downs. Um, so this is just one example. I'd like to take you to a little more sophisticated example. Um, although I really like this one, um, maybe the maybe the next one uh, has a little bit more complexity to it. Um, so let me make sure my battery is not running low. Um, go back into Seekso Designer, open up Seekso Catalog. And it's actually a, I'm looking for a report uh, to make a certain analysis. So I will go into the anal analytics group. And in the analytics group, I see there is this um, daily 3D report, comparable store sales. Well, it, this drives my interest. And I see this report comes from McDonald's. Um, like as an insurance company and, and a yeah, food, um, uh, fast food company are, are not necessarily the same in structure and the way how to manage data. Um, but specifically for that reason, I'd like to show how you can still work with reports from, from other industries that might not have been designed exactly the way you're going to use it. Um, it's, it's not necessarily, you don't have to have the exact same use case. Well, if we look at this report, um, and, and I've worked with McDonald's to, to get this into a Seekso catalog, so I kind of know how this works, but um, the, the, the three main KPIs, what you see at the top, is sales, it's guest count, and then there's an average, um, uh, an average check. So that's the, that's the AC. And the COMP stands for comparable, so they, they want to compare and McDonald's stores. And then there are two kind of um, other elements that is key, and that's what makes this report a 3D overview, and that's experience of the future versus non-experience of the future. And that has to do with McDonald's restaurants that, that already are configured to completely uh, contain all the futuristic elements, maybe self-service uh, portals, or yeah, I don't know what, what it completely means, but um, I can imagine that um, the experience of the future are are, are newer restaurants that are already configured certain a, a specific concept. Um, this report has been built on our uh, demo data, so you see uh, you, you don't see real McDonald's restaurants. You see our, our products here, um, but what you see now is that um, in this in this report there is a there's a drill down and it shows the growth versus previous year. So all these percentages are growth numbers. And then there is this experience of the future versus non-experience of the future, and then there is there is a delta between that. And what you kind of expect is that the growth of the experience of the future restaurants is the highest. Um, and then it ends with a, with a bottom ranking, uh, where you can choose whether you want to see the experience of the future and non-experience of the future um, um, report, but there is a, a top 10 stores and a bottom 10 stores. Well, like I said, this is a complete different concept as within an insurance company, but I would like to use this for some different KPIs, and I would like to use the live, non-live um, yeah, split that we have in our application as, as being experience of the future versus non-experience of the future.
Okay, I say that I agree with the privacy policy. Uh, you see some requirements already on the website. The wizard will check if you have certain variables. Some reports might require a certain variable or sometimes it could require a certain dimension. Um, but the wizard will guide you through those steps. Uh, there, there's a whole prerequisites check. And if everything is there, you won't even see it. Um, it, it will only show if, if you miss certain prerequisites. Okay, I'm going to select the source system. That's the uh, first one, insurance. Now, it, um, as you can see, the, the wizard guides me already um, what I'm selecting here. So I'm selecting um, the sales account, and you see that it comes back at two different, uh, at two different uh, places. So again, I don't have true net sales, but I will go into my operating income for net sales. And then I will take my um, my operating expense, and on the third one I will take um, my operating result. So it's slightly different than an average check, but um, the concept will definitely work. Now it asks me for a regions list, so um, I can pick basically. Um, and, and this is pretty fine to use the entity dimension, but I can also build in the wizard steps like, okay, what is your regions dimension, for example. Um, well, this application already has a main regions list, so that's easy. I'll just pick it. Um, and you can see sometimes it asks for, for members in the application, and sometimes it can actually assume that you already have a certain list, like what is your key region list. Most, most applications will already have something like that, so then it will not ask for all individual members. Um, now it asks me, okay, what, what dimension would you like to do for this further split of these two key elements? And um, in, in this application, I don't have the experience of the future versus non-experience of the future. I do have this live, non-live in, um, in a separate dimension here in this application. So that's what I'm going to take. And now it will ask me, okay, what is the total for live, non-live? Well, here is total. Then what is strategic stores? Well, I translate that into life, life insurances. And I'll translate this into non-life insurances. And then it will ask me, okay, for the ranking, what dimension would you like to use for the for the individual stores? And here again, we don't have stores, we, we have entities, so I'll pick the entity dimension for this uh, individual ranking. I'm gonna press create report. The report is being created. Um, and as you can see, it's it's fully functional. Uh, the report by default is is not published yet. It will just uh, generate it. Will become one of your unpublished reports. But if you want to publish this, um, you like the result. Could be a uh, something um, you can put already in your profit menu. Assign it to some users. Now the report is published, I can go into the Seek a Copit website and um, I see the full report being, um, um, yeah, being fully operational. So I can click on the three different accounts. I have them here in the pick list. And um, at the same time, I can also select whether I want to do the live versus non-live um, in my two separate tables. So this is the, yeah, the the report to uh, with its full functionality but used on a completely different application. Um, in terms of the downloading, this is kind of what I wanted to show you, but I definitely would want to go back to the CXO catalog website. I do that by going into the CXO designer because I have not left a review yet. And that is a key part, I think, once you've downloaded something, it works, you like it, or you think something can be improved. Um, We'd really appreciate if you take that interaction as well on the application. So I will go into the analytics group. That's where I found the report. So to make a review, you can just click here. There's no rating right now. I say I want to submit a review. Uh, I'll give it five stars. This is the only mandatory thing. Give it five stars. You can already hit submit. Obviously, we would prefer if you give some some textual review as well. Um, 
but if you're short in time, please let us at least know what, what the value of the report is for you. So we can start ranking the reports on, on top ranked reports. Um, okay, I don't have great, um, I don't have a lot of inspiration, but I'll just tell them it's a great report. Um, I could give some pros and cons, but right now I'll just submit to review. And um, the, the review has one additional moderation step, uh, which will be checked daily, and then uh, they will be placed on the website. So that's um, that's basically the yeah the whole loop of of using CXO Catalog uh, from downloading, um, testing, configuring the report, and then leaving a review, and then you're kind of done. Um, so it's it's all quite simple, um, and yeah, we would love to. Hear your feedback on the first 14 reports, but love even more to to understand what the next 14 reports and and etc. So we really like to grow Cixo catalog to to hopefully um, um, yeah by mid next year maybe to to uh, somewhere between the 50 and 100 reports uh, valuable reports with good reviews. That's uh, that's the ambition, and we'll work uh, closely with you to to get there. Okay, so how can you participate? Um, we have a special email address for this. It's called catalog at cxosoftware.com. Uh, the email will go to me and Marcel. So um, yeah, you're sending it not to uh, some some random email address, but it, it's just a way for us to get um, get the uh, emails, and we can distribute it with the rest of our colleagues. Um, what we'd like from you in order to start working with your report. First of all, we need to know how your report looks like. Um, if it has sensitive data, feel free to blur the data or, or use a test application without sensitive data. Um, it's just a recommendation I would, I would like to give you uh, to, to not send us any production numbers. Um, but we'll, even if you do, we'll treat it completely with confidentiality. This will never be published. Not, even if you do send us production numbers or any numbers of your application, we will always rebuild the report on on a demo application, something like Comma Communications, and we will take the screenshot of the rebuilt version um, to to put in Cixo Catalog. So after you've sent us this, there is a there is a process on our side where we where we're going to rebuild the report, we're going to build um, the wizard steps, and then it will become downloadable. Um, expect uh, you know initially this might take one or two days, but uh, at some moment we'll develop a little bit more tools. Um, I, I think we can do this rather quickly. So if you have a new uh, report, we can very quickly have this in, in Cixo Catalog. And at some point we really like this to become self-service as well. Um, and, and we're a little further away from that because that would require um, a very intuitive UI to create your own wizard steps and then um, you know some, some blurring option to kind of hide any sensitive data. Um, but in the in the future, we really like to go into that direction where where there is no moderation in between, and you can just you know publish reports straight from your own application. Um, so besides the screenshot, what we'd like to have as well is uh, is a layout window of the objects, and that just helps us to understand if there is any hidden item selectors or labels on top of charts, or um, this gives us just a better understanding. Um, if your report contains a narrative template, please send that as well, just as the HTML file or a text file with the, with the actual narrative template in it. Um, and of course, we'd love to know how the dashboard works and, and what the value is for you, um, because that, that will help us to uh, put it on the Cixo Catalog website and, and explain the value. Um, well, once we've got all that, we'll, uh, we'll rebuild the dashboard uh, using our generic application. Um, and then we'll publish it on uh, on Cixo Catalog. Uh, yeah, I'd really like to invite all of you to start using Cixo Catalog. As soon as you have 6.4, you can start importing it. The sharing part is something you can already do today with version 6.3 or even if you're on 6.2. Just um, send us this information and um, we will always have to look at, at every uh, report, whether it's generic enough uh, to publish it, so there, um, you know, most most reports and templates we can definitely publish, but some things could be too specific and and really hard to um, 
um, hard to put on Sixer catalog, but then we'll communicate with you if uh, we think we need an adjusted version. Okay, this is the moment I like to um, I like to hand over to uh, Marcel. Marcel is actually going to take us to some of the features that come with 6.4 that we've developed to, um, to to kind of build stronger reports uh, with the ultimate benefit to to use them in Sixer catalog. Uh, we've seen that a lot of great things that we were able to do like like the coloring in the in the top chart we had to use a lot of mdx calculation to do that um, also ranking lists what you see here there's a lot of mdx involved in that and and for the donuts for example we could already do that but that required to stack a lot of pie charts on top of each other and, and labels etc uh, with Sixer catalog we like to enable these features in a much simpler way um, and and not uh, having to download MD MDX because that, that's very application specific and, and will, could lead potentially to instability. Um, that's the reason why we've built quite some of these features now as out-of-the-box features and Marcel will take you through them. He, um, he has a whole demo prepared on this. Um, so Marcel, over to you. Thanks, Walter. The first new function that I want to share with you is the Navigate To option for images. We see that the redirects are often being used in our application, but those redirects only work with text. In version 6.4, we introduce redirects for images. This means that you can click on an image and that you will be redirected to another report or to a URL. This way, we want to make the navigation for users in CXO easier. In the report you see here, you see different images on the right side. And when I hover over those images, you see a little hand as an indication that it will redirect you to another report. What you also see is that when I hover over the image at the bottom for commentary, is that we don't see any hand. So what I will do now is I will go into CXO Designer and I will add a link to that image. So I open up my CXO designer. I open the report. And I go to my image control. In this case, I need image number seven. As you can see, this is the uh, commentary icon. And what you can also see is that we have an option here at the bottom, navigate to. So I can click on set link and then I can choose between whether I want to navigate to a different report or to a web address. In this case, I want to navigate to another report. So I make use of the drop down. I search for my commentary report. I select commentary sign up and I save it. And this is it. If I now go back to the front end, you see that when I hover over the image, that uh, little hand appears. I can now click, and you see that we're redirected to uh, the commentary sign-up report. I will now open my next report, my corporate summary report. And what you see in there are donut charts. And this is the new option that I want to discuss now. Um, in CXO, we already had pie charts, uh, but we have extended the pie chart control with the option to create donuts. As some of you might know, we're not the biggest fan of pie charts. And that is because um, the sizes between the different uh, slices is not so clear in a pie chart. However, when you only have a few slices, or when you want to focus on a specific slice, we do see the added value. Um, with a donut, you can actually focus on a certain slice, on a certain number. Because as you can see, you have the option to display a number in the middle. I will go back to my designer and I will change this pie chart into a donut. So I click on CXO Designer. I go to my corporate summary report. 
And what I have to do now is I have to go to my first pi at the bottom. That one is called pi slash donut chart. And this is the same control as you're used to for pie charts, but we have now extended this control. So if I go to layout, you see that I now have the option to tick donut chart. So that is what I will do now. I will refresh my report and you will see that uh, the pie chart will change into a donut chart. But this is not the only thing that I want to show you. I also want to show you that we can display a number in the middle of my donut. And in this case, uh, we're looking at four different product groups. And I want to show you the percentage um, of the consumer product group of the total. And the consumer product group is in this case, the exploited item. And for that, to display that number in the middle, I can go to my label, still part of my uh, pie slash donut chart control. I open up the labels, uh, formats and colors. And as you can see, we have here the option central value. I double click here and you see that we have a few options to select from. In this case, I want to focus on exploited item, but then uh, a percentage number. We can also just show the number of uh, consumer products in this case, but I want to show the percentage. So that is the one that I select. I refresh my uh, report again, and then you will so see that the percentage will display in the middle. The last thing that I would like to add in this case is a label. As you can see, we already have labels here below uh, the different pie charts. Um, but these labels are actually uh, controls of in my uh, free format report. I can also add a label over here, central label. I can double click. So below my central value, I can add a central label. I write here consumer. For the last time, I refresh my page. And as you can see, we now have consumer also in the middle. So we can now actually remove the label that we use in this free format report. What you can also do is you can change the format. So you can change the format still of the percentage uh, in the middle, but also uh, of the label. And for that, you can just use a format as you're used to in our application. The next option that I want to show you that we have added in version 6.4 is variances in charts. And first I will go to the report that I'm going to use. And in this case, it's just an uh, PNL with on the right side certain charts. Until now, we actually missed the option to display variances as a positive or negative color in a chart. It was actually possible with a workaround, but it was not very straightforward. In version 6.4 it is. The variance formula that you normally use in tables can now also be used in charts. And I will do that here in uh, the second chart and in the third chart. So I will go back to my CXO designer. I go to the report. And I first go to the control of the second chart. And as you can see, I already use a list for the chart bar variance. So I'm now going to that list bar variance. And at the moment, this list is empty. What I will do first is I will add two different items. And the first item is my actual scenario. And the second item 
is my reference scenario, the one that is selected in the point of view. In this case, it is budget. Um, I will refresh my page and then you will see that the chart looks like the chart here at the top, but that is actually not what we want. I don't want to display uh, those bars, so I'm going to hide them. But what I want to display is I want to show the variance between actual and my reference uh, scenario. So I add a third item and now I'm going to use my variance formula. So I go to formula, I select variance, and uh, we still have to make the same selection first. So I first have to make the comparison between actual and the reference scenario. And now you see here at the bottom that a few things changed. You can still make a selection of your variance style for tables, um, but they are now being displayed as icons. That is something that I don't want to focus on. I want to focus on the options that we have here at the bottom. In this case, I want to show the variance as bars. So that is the option that I select and I save. And now you see that the variances are calculated by CXO and displayed in my chart. The last thing that you can do is you can go to formats and for instance, insert a data label. So you can also see the variance numbers for every month. But it's quite clear where the difference is in this case. Actuals are actually behind budget in May and in June. What we can also use is uh, lines for variances. And in the chart at the bottom, we see uh, an area which is representing the budget. And we see a line that is representing our action numbers. If I go to the settings of that third chart, we see that I use two different lists, one for bars and one for lines. And I first show you what I selected in the bar list. I just selected the reference scenario. So that's being picked up again from the point of view. And the format that I use is the area format for charts. So therefore we see here the budget being displayed as an area. I will go now to my uh, second list, the line list, because this is the place where I want to calculate the difference between actual and budget. And in this case, we see only one line, actuals, and I'm going to add my reference scenario first because we already have the reference scenario in this uh, chart as an area. I don't want to display this one in this case as a line and make it invisible. And I now add a third item to calculate the difference again between actual and budget. So I select variance, actual reference scenario, and now I make use of the first option that we have over here, fill area. And it will actually fill the area between my actual line and my budget area. As you can see, we see now um, the positive and the negative colors. And also now it's pretty clear that we're only behind budget in May and in June. So these are the two options that we have added for variances in charts. The last function that I want to show you is a new type of list, ranking list. In CXO, it's already possible to create rankings by making use of MDX lists. Um, but for that, you need to know how to write the MDX script. I will now go to an example In this case, a product sales performance report that includes an MDX list. And in this report, you see the sales for the, for the different products that we have in our demo application. You see that it's being ring ranked. So the product with uh, the largest sales is being put on the top of the list. Um, but I'm now going to replace this list 
which is actually an MDX list with a ranking list. So I go back to my designer. I select my product sales performance report. And I will first show you how the list looks like that we are currently using in the rows. As you can see, everything is grayed out. If I click on edit list, you can see that we use the MDX list type. And here you see the script that we use. This list is the list that I want to replace. So I go first to my content on the right side, rows, and I'm going to create a new list. I will call it row ranking list. And then I need to select a list type. And we have added here the list, list type ranking. So I will select this one. And now the last thing that I need to do is I have to select which dimension members I would like to rank. And in this case, I would like to rank my products, which are in the A01 dimension. So I select this one. And now we get a few more options to select from. First of all, I need to select the parent member from which I would like to rank. In this case, I want to rank from the total products. And then you can select which level from that parent member you would like to rank. Often I think you will choose base members, so that is often also something that I do right now. But you also have different options. So you can also uh, rank, for instance, the children of total products. In this case, I leave base members selected. Uh, I want to rank 10 different items. So it's already good, but you can just change it with a number. But I change it back into 10. And uh, that's it for now. As you can see here with the sorting, we sort from top to bottom. And that is what I currently want. I save this list. I'm going to use this list. And what you then see is that uh, the products already rank. It looks a bit different because in the previous report, uh, we changed the height of the rows. So that is something that I'm also going to do right now. We still have rules also for this type of list. So I click on rules. And over here, I can set the height. So I put it on 30. And I save it. 30 pixels high. And what you will see is that uh, the list is already looking like uh, the MDX list. Uh, we still have a few options that we can change. So I'll go back to edit list. And we can also include the total. So that is what I will do first. I select include total. And then it will calculate the total of the 10 different items that are now included in my list. As you can see, the total now represents 44% uh, of the total products. I still want to make a change because I also want to know uh, how big the group is of items or products that are not being displayed in my list at this moment. So the ones that are smaller than the top 10. I can click on other, save, and then CXO not only calculates the total, but it also calculates the other number. So now you can see that 56% of our products is not in the top 10. And you now see that the total is just displaying as 100. As always, we keep improving our solution. So also in this case with ranking lists, we want to extend the functionality. So an example um, of a function that we will add later on is, uh, for instance, the option to add um, an exception so that you can actually exclude certain members from your list. This was the overview that we wanted to give you about version 6.4. We will now take the time uh, to answer your questions.